So you can run 10.5 seconds for the 100 meters, but you can only jump six meters for the long jump. What's going on there? Why can't sprinters make good long jumpers? And conversely, why is it difficult sometimes for top class long jumpers to run quality 100 meter times? Helder Gonzalez asks, why can't long jumpers make good sprinters and vice versa? Well, obviously he's talking a bit generally there, as there are some sprinters who have made good long jumpers and vice versa. Of course, there are only one or two that have been really, truly elite at both events. Carl Lewis obviously comes to mind. Of our current crop of jumpers, elite jumpers, there are very few that are actually running the 100 and doing the long jump competitively. Potentially the fastest of all the female long jumpers at present is Malika Miyambo. She has a best 100 meter time of 11.21 seconds and a wind aided time of 11.13 and her best long jump is 7 meters 30. Regular 7 meter jumper Ivana Valletta has a best 60 meter time of 7.31 seconds, but that was set many years ago. And indeed, the only 100 meter time I could find for her was 11.90 seconds. Dr. J. Gale has run 10.13. He's the fastest from what I could ascertain from a quick look at world athletic statistics of the current crop of jumpers. Marquis Dendy has a best 100 meter time of 10.31 seconds and that dates back to 2015. His best long jump is 8 meters 42. So what are the reasons why sprinters can't often make good long jumpers? Well, one is the amount of training time that they have available. For a sprinter, you need to work more on your acceleration and your starts. And of course, you need to have greater levels of sprint endurance, particularly if you're running the 200 meters. This makes a big difference between the training required for the sprinter and the long jumper. The latter needs to be quick over 40 meters and they need to run in a specific way. So the second factor that mitigates against sprinters making good long jumpers is the fact that their sprinting differs from that of the long jumper in that in order to long jump really well you need to run specifically into the board and prepare to take off in an equally specific way. It's of no use running it in at 10.8, 10.9 meters a second and not being able to affect a takeoff. Again, in many of my videos, you'll have seen how we work over and over again on setting up the takeoff. For a sprinter to become a good long jumper, they would need to replace a lot of their sprint work with specific takeoff mechanics work. And potentially, they'd also need to change their conditioning. Although sprinters do plyometrics, I'm quite surprised that they don't tend to delve into the jumper's playbook of plyometrics and utilize more reactive methods. I often see sprinters bounding, for example, but don't see so many doing drop jumps or eccentric jumping, for example. I believe that if they were to do that, that would enhance their top speed as well. However, returning to the subject matter of this video, they would need to do more of that to develop the specific explosiveness required to long jump. Of course, the other obvious reason why the sprinter just can't rock up and do the long jump is the fact that they need not only to be able to take off, but perform a hitch kick or a hitch hang, for example. So there's a huge technical requirement and that technique needs to be worked over and over and over again as much as they need to work on their sprint start. One of the less obvious reasons why many sprinters don't make good long jumpers and vice versa, or I should say elite long jumpers or sprinters is the different mindset that's required for the two events. Long jumpers start obviously in their own time well within the 60 second limit. Whereas if you're sprinting, you have to get into the mindset to be ready to go when the gun is fired by the starter. Cueing the jump when you're standing on the run up vis-a-vis -vis cueing a sprint when you're getting ready to go into the blocks requires a different motivation, a different mindset, 
and a different ability to cope with the stress and the pressure of the specific environment. I often get asked how fast do I need to be to jump a certain distance and this again reflects on the sprinting angle as being very fast does not necessarily mean that you can jump far as I've said earlier. It obviously puts you into a very good position in which to be able to do so. But through my own coaching experience, I've had 10.5 second 100 meter runners who've only been able to jump 7 meters 50, whereas I've had jumpers who are capable of running 10.7, 10.8, jumping 780, 790 distances. And from a female point of view, jumpers that are capable of running 11, 8 to 12, to 12 seconds, jumping 640 to 650. Therefore, it's very specific how you train to be good at the long jump. Also, it's the time over the last three to four steps in the long jump, which is crucial, and not decelerating into the takeoff. Body type, morphology. Sprinters, particularly male sprinters, often carry more upper body mass compared to their elite male long jump counterparts. Power to weight ratio is crucial for the long jump. Indeed, it is for sprinting. However, it's particularly so for the long jump in that you've got to lift that weight, your mass, off the board into the air at takeoff. And the more weight you are carrying, the harder that becomes. Well, I hope this video gave you an insight into the requirements of sprinting and jumping and why it's not easy for one athlete from one event to do the other. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this video, or indeed any of my others, then do leave them in the comments section below or through my other social media. Please do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be made aware of new videos when I upload them. And do also give this video a like, a thumbs up. And do consider becoming a channel member. You'll get exclusive content if you join at coach athlete member level. There are 29 videos that deep dive into the specific subject matters that are going to improve you as a coach or an athlete. So head over to the channel's homepage, click on the join button to see what offers are available. And if you become a channel supporter, you'll do just that. For just $1.99 a month, you can help me produce the type of content that's hopefully helping you become a better athlete and coach. Three lap have just launched a new piece of kit. Now this looks like the TX Junior Pros, the pyramids, yellow pyramids, that record the times as the athletes pass them. But what this one does, it actually gives you the command on your marks and sets the athlete off with a bang. So it emits the sounds through a speaker built into it. It gives you a 10 second lead in once you press the set button and then randomly within I think a two and a half second period the gun will fire through the device to set you off. Now that triggers the system so it's going to be a very accurate way to measure starts. If you want to find out more then do get in contact with me. If you like the Jumps Squad merchandise that I often wear in these videos then do check out the spring store. You'll see the products available underneath this video for example and I've launched a new backpack rucksack with the Jump Squad logo on it so do check that out.